Bow wow. Welcome to Dog Star. We are Sun Dogs, and this week we have the pleasure of sitting down with the illustrious, the multi-talented SJ, the Afrocentric Ratchet. How you doing? I'm good. Hello. How are you guys doing? Doing good. It's peachy, Th- yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining us. Of course, um, of course. Yeah, long time coming. I'm glad we finally got you. Yeah, it's been a super long time. <laughs> exactly. Well, you're a busy lady. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Very busy. But let's top into the time machine. Travel back to the early days, to the yeah, Illinois were, days, the Chicago days. Yeah, that's where I'm born and raised. Um, from. Yeah, what um, what were the, your earliest musical memories, or what was being played around the house? Oh wow! Okay, so two questions. Uh, earliest musical memories: My grandmother would make me dress up like Erica Badu when I was five, oh, okay. and so in like head wraps and stuff, yeah, and yeah. sing on milk crates. So I would sing in front like, of people or just in front of her. Um, my grandma was not very nice to people, so usually just in front of her. So oh, okay, okay. <laughs> not many visitors at the house. And did, but yeah, does she have any favorite? She have you do apple tree or? Um, probably some of all of that, okay. like just that early stuff, the yeah. Baduism for sure, right. but. That's probably some of my earliest memories. Um, Temptations, Motown, Michael Jackson, um, Michael Bolton, random, right, like, right. share, like, <laughs> yeah. really eclectic taste. My grandmother always had really interesting taste. But then my mom, who was obviously growing up in the 90s, so she had, like, lo- lo- a lot of hip-hop influences and a mm. lot of Kim and, um, yeah, Nas, Sean Paul, like, Jamaican Names music, reggae Brown, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, like, just into all of that. So... I had tons of different eclectic experiences musically, but because she would listen to, like Creed randomly or like you know just super random <laughs> stuff, and yeah. so it made me have like a really well-rounded taste in music. I think yeah. that's cool. That's uh, wild that she made you perform <laughs> on top of the milk crate. For did that make you want to be a musician one day, or did that kind of where you kind Turn of turned like, you off? A bit. Yeah. Um. I don't think I thought anything of it at that time. It just was right. a part of my little five-year-old life, and it was just a fun thing to do. I don't think I saw myself as a performer. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Not really as a person who wanted to be in the spotlight like that, I guess. Mm-hmm. Not at least at five, yeah. Yeah. At any point, honestly. I don't think I've ever really, that part of it doesn't attract me at all. Right. I think mm-hmm. I just always like doing me. At that age, I probably was more into like drawing and art and I wanted to be a fashion designer and then like nine, I wanted to be a novelist and yeah, so like really weird kid, never really had a strong uh, hanker into just one thing, just a jack of all trades. Yes, still I'm sure putting all your passion into each one of those interests for those short periods of time, no? Uh, Maybe, yeah, I guess if you say like that for those short periods of time, like I'm hyper focused on a thing, but like then I'm like, yeah, nah. Not doing it anymore. <laughs> yeah, before Over it, before yeah. I really got into music heavy, it was a uh, painting. I was painting like super heavy, mm. like poetry, like just super heavy. Wow. I thought I was really on some stuff there. <laughs> um, do you still have uh, a lot of those original arts, or did you trash them um, when you moved out of that phase? Of um, artistry? They get trashed, but like right. not necessarily out of the phase, just at different points of like experiences in life. I guess mm. was I like, like yeah, it's enough. Yeah. <laughs> Type by. Um back to the, back to the early days. Were yeah. either your grandmother or your mother uh, musical, or did they play any instruments? My gr- my grandmother um, definitely was not a musical person. More tactile with her talent, so she okay. like a uh, real green thumb. Had mm. a belt making business when I was a shorty, like super random. Wow! But like my mom sings horribly. Like she has the worst singing voice you've ever heard. Oh. Um, <laughs> like the worst. She's cannot hear a oh, note to no. save her life. Uh, but she used to rap when I, when she was young. So when she mm. was in high school, she used to rap. And there's this one video of her graduation where she's like outside with all her friends and family and she's just like spitting. Whoa. Like in that very like, you know, that time kind of way. But yeah. like she's, get, she's getting off though, for real. Wow. So yeah, but nobody ever took anything, I think, dream like seriously until like, I'm, I'm the first to like dreaming mm. wow. in my family. So yeah. Who who encouraged that dreaming? Uh, nobody. Oh, uh, <laughs> just not, to be honest, like yeah, yeah. it wasn't really a, a externalized uh, affirmation. It mm-hmm. wasn't like a lot of people saying like, "Oh, you got to do this thing" or that kind of thing. But my mm-hmm. mom would always say, "You're destined for greatness." She would always tell me that. Mm-hmm. Didn't know what that meant or looked like at any point, but um, I just knew I could if I wanted to. So eventually, yeah. when I decided that I wanted to, I am. So yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm not sure when you moved to Minnesota, but uh, uh, in 2000, in 
2014. Okay. 2013. So did you have any friends back in Chicago that were really into like being creative like you were? Um, so I was like freakishly shy for a period of time. Mm -hmm. I was bullied in like grammar school, mm. like, you know, traditional stuff. Right. Good old mm. bullying. I'm just like, <laughs> no bullying kids. No. Um, but so when I got to high school, I wasn't on a creative path at all. Right. But then one summer, there was a program called After School Matters in Chicago, and they had, like, a music program to be trained in, like, singing and theater and all that kind of stuff. Cool. And so, like, you had to go apply, like, a adults, like, like a job. It was, like, mm. a job fair, and I went there, and it was all these other kids who had all this other training, and they were, like, formally... Right. All that. All the previous and I was experience just, like, and stuff. And they are just like, track. I'm going to sing a song. <laughs> And I got into the program, and Whoa. so I, I'm classically trained in opera and Whoa. jazz and super random, though. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Not even, like, I'm not, like, on some boastful stuff, because don't ask me nothing formal. Right. I don't know, but I know. Right. Yeah. You know, if I, what was I know what O Fortuna is, you know, and I know the words <laughs> to it. For right, no all these random Italian phrases. Yeah, right. exactly. Right. Yeah. What, what was it like being around all those creative people all of a sudden after not being for so long? Disheartening, if I'm oh, being honest. Mm. Yeah, I felt inadequate. Mm. Yeah, I didn't think that I had the same uh, talents or skills or abilities as they did because, or at least I didn't have the, tr I knew I didn't have the training. I just mm, knew I totally. didn't have it. And you know, they were pulling out sheet music. I'm like, what is this? Mm. Yeah, what do you mean? <laughs> I like sight regular read. words. Yeah, 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 like all these things. And um, like the the genres were so vast and broad and different than what I might have been growing up listening to. Right. Mm -hmm. So it, everything about it was intimidating. And I really wish, looking back, that I took, I like got more out of my shell and mm. really dug in and you know joined in with the kids singing on the train when it was happening. <laughs> I, I just mm. was too scared all the time. But it was still like a a good uh, introduction to what was to come, I guess, a foreshadow yeah. of sorts. Yeah, not necessarily the launch pad that maybe it should have been, but um, yeah. when did you end up finding people to be creative around that you, like, could relate with? Um, So I moved to Florida for a period of time in, like, 2016. Okay. Uh, moved back <laughs> to Minnesota, mm. um, like, at the end of that year. And just had a very tumultuous life experience going on at that time. Mm -hmm. And so I was out of it. I mean, full-blown manic. Um, but like that cool mania where you just feel like super excited and like the world is my oyster and yeah. all that good stuff. Good so, world less. Yeah. yeah, it was <laughs> the nice side of it, right? Um, so I felt finally like there was no fear of of trying to record or write or anything like that. So um, I asked someone I knew at the time to show me how to like record. And they taught me how to use Pro Tools and... I was like, show me how to make beats. And they showed me how to use Logic. And I, like, locked myself in a room for, like, two weeks just making beats and songs. And, wow. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, that so kind of that Started kind of here thing. in Minnesota with the, yeah, the music. Yeah, very recent, in, like, 20, 2017 is when I first picked up my pen and wrote the first thing, probably. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Y you had never written uh, poetry or diary journal entries? I mean. Or creative writing. Yeah. I feel like, of course. We all have at right, some point. Right. Um, I used to want to write novels at a oh, period that's of time, right. you know. But writing music was different because I had to figure out what I what I wanted to sound like, mm -hmm. what I wanted to feel like, yeah, what I was trying yeah. to say, and I hadn't thought about any of that until I was sitting there doing it. Mm -hmm. But there was no pressure, so it just was like, "Hey, I'm loopy. I haven't slept in two weeks." Whatever happens, happens. Mm -hmm. And um, when all that was over, and when I was back in normal people land. I still had the music and I still had the love. So, yeah. yeah, I'm still rocking out. That's awesome. How did you land on being an MC in your manic state? Like, how is that the <laughs> um, the calling? I grew up listening to Lil' Kim. Uh, I found Nicki Minaj at 15 years old. I did school <laughs> with my best friend one day and we drove out to the Burbs and the whole ride there, we were just bumping Kim. Not Kim, uh, Nicki. Right. And I had never heard her before. I was like, who is this? And right. she was like, it's Nicki Minaj. And I was like, she's the best thing ever. <laughs> and... So I knew that I kind of wanted to. And then, like, mm -hmm. my son's dad in high school, he, like, rapped. Okay. Terrible. Hor horrible hey. at it. Terrible <laughs> at it. Um, so we used to, like, try when we were younger. But I just it always just seemed like a silly thing to me mm -hmm. when I was trying then because I didn't believe in it then. Mm -hmm. But then, like, I was sitting there and I was writing stuff. And I was like, oh, this is cool. <laughs> this is the coolest thing I ever heard. Yeah. And now looking back, of course, I'm like, shut right, up. Right. It was lukewarm. No, some of it was, like, literally, like, 
crazy, but like a lot of it was just crazy, <laughs> just <laughs> mess. So yeah, that's how we got here. Wow. Who uh, are you still friends with the person who showed you how to? No, not at all. Oh, yeah, no. no. You know, burn at the stake if you can. Hey, <laughs> one it, of those. It's in the past. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, it was a definitely a necessary evil to experience like the joys of what I get to do now. Wow. For sure. Are you still making beats at all? I mean, we know you're working with myriad of producers, but are, um, you, are you the producer on any of these tracks? Beat making is so, like, it takes everything. For me, I could never write on the stuff that I produced. Mm. Yeah, I it just never worked. Yeah. yeah, it just... You're too close to the material. Way too yeah. close. And it's like, I can hear what I want it to be, but I just don't want it to be me. Mm. Um, and it makes it very difficult for me to write when I'm in a production type of headspace. Totally. Mm. So I just don't anymore. It's kind of like why I said, like, I, I'll take on an interest and then I'm done with it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I, I can still paint, but I've yet to complete a painting in like four years. But mm. I can if I wanted to. Right. Yeah. But I have no desire to be Picasso. If that makes any sense. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. And I want to track back to the the earlier days of rapping when you said, oh, you know, we weren't taking it as seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, were you going by Esther the Afrocentric Ratchet at that time? Or what What were your other stage names? I think I was just remember? going by SJ. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I've been going by SJ since like 2014. I'm not, oh, okay. It's just obviously the, the initials for my government name, but I spell mm -hmm. it out. Um, so that's just kind of been with me. Right. But then I made the Afrocentric Ratchet my Instagram name like 2016, maybe. No, i not thinking this at all. Right. And then when I started rapping, I was like, this low key makes sense because I'm Afrocentric, but I'm Ratchet. A little bit the with one fit the music. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a little like description without me having to say a lot. Like when I perform, people are like, you want this introduction? No, just tell them who I am, and yeah, then the rest will know. explain itself. Exactly, exactly. Um, if you're going to get up there and things are going to happen, that's enough for me. Yeah, that's cool yeah. about doing music. You can really connect to your personality or, like, you know, find yeah. the best parts of your personality to mm -hmm. put, put into that. So, uh, on during our research, we saw something that said uh, fourth uh like album it was like a teaser for the album that's not out yet but it said fourth and then we were looking mm. back and we we're counting the albums what was the first uh song that you released um the first song i ever put anywhere is still on soundcloud now and it says sj -E -S -S -J -Y, no afrocentric ratchet mm. and it's called never learn and it's like this um like it's either like a simon Pete or like Peace Soul or something, like something like super YouTube. -y. Right. But like, you know, upper echelon YouTube. -y. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I still think it's good to this day. Like I think for the first thing I ever recorded and like put out into the world. Yeah. Probably the first thing I ever like completely wrote out. Mm -hmm. I think it's fire. Like I mean super it's still relevant. out there. You would have deleted it if you didn't think it was fire, right? I don't know. I haven't got to that point yet where I have to like <laughs> grapple with the lead and stuff if it's trash or not. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, a good problem to have is not much stuff is trash. Exactly. I don't often feel like, like this is the worst thing. No one can hear this. Mm. Um, I know everything's fire. It's just a matter of, is it fire enough? Is it <laughs> the firest? It yeah, could be, you know. Exactly. Um, but yeah, Never Learn. And it's probably like three other songs that are like out there with it. And no, I can't speak for all of those. <laughs> <laughs> so never learn. What you, did you write that during your mm -hmm. manic? Yeah, uh, it was like six months, like six to eight months of mania. So I wrote wow. like, everything I wrote or did in that time frame. I did manic. So wow. But, and, yeah. but it sounds like it's a reflective song, at least. Um, was never it learned. therapeutic? Yeah, was it therapeutic um, to write? I think I was really processing a lot that was happening in the world. Um, a lot of police shootings and um, just the stresses of my own life. And I had, like, relationship turbulence and different things like that going on. So I was just being really introspective about everything I was feeling. And just Right. It's like three verses. It's like it's like four, four minutes, five minutes long. It's, I was on a deal. run. I was talking about the president. I was, I, was, I was on some stuff. I was saying everything I had to say in that thing. But, yeah, it just was, it, to me looking back, it kind of sounds a little rambly, but it's like cool ramblings, yeah. Yeah, stream mm. of consciousness. Yeah. That's cool. And 
yeah, I mean, knowing where you are today, it's wild to see how just no limits your music has become from the the uh, early beginning. Yeah, yeah. The early beginning. Yeah, literally. I want to make sure we didn't miss any artist names because that's like one of my favorite things. He went back, backtracked to ask, and yeah, I just. Yeah, it's, it, and... I've only been SJ or SJ the Afrocentric Ratchet. I've grappled with changing it at points because I know it's a mouthful. Right. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's always been that. It's, I've never had the desire to change it really either. Like I go, ah, ah, but no. I've done your momentum builds. Yeah, exactly. Or it's just like it's, it's still too defining. You know, yeah. 12 years from now, maybe I'll just be SJ again. Mm. You know, but right now, taking it away like what what good would it serve what benefit would it have people being able to type in SJ faster mm-hmm. no people who like what's her name what's her name and they always get at least pieces of it exactly you know the exactly. afro some people call me the afrocentric some people call me afro ratchet some people call me just SJ <laughs> to afro like people call me all types of variations but as long as you make sure you got to that that typing bar exactly. that search bar i'm gonna come up and so, the, exactly it's a yeah. unique enough name especially with uh, yeah. I feel like if you were to change it back to SJ there might be a dozen SJs there are there. a lot yeah. of like SJs and I thought I was so cool in 2014 yeah when I, <laughs> you you inspired I didn't think it was <laughs> I didn't think it was uh like cool enough to do SJ personally yeah that's mine yeah and then uh you did it and I was just like this is cool she's cool like I think because I spelled it I felt cooler than you Irregular SJs. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> no, as, as taught that you're the reason why I didn't spell it out. The reason why I actually like took on that name was I worked at Comcast at a point. And I was in a training class with a bunch of people, and they had mm. names like Shara, or Sharon, mm. or Shala, or and my name is Sarah. Mm. So I got so tired of hearing names similar to mine, oh. and me looking back going, "Huh, huh," mm. and no one's calling my name. Right. So I just started going by SJ. But I'm so extra, I couldn't just be S. J. Right. Like, what's the point of that? Sorry, love you. But like, you know, for me at least, you know, I'm yeah. extra. I gotta right. be extra. This is so the, I spell a it name, out. not yeah. an alter ego. Right. Is, yeah. yeah, and I have such a regular name, Sarah. Like Sarah. I needed my nickname. I've never been able to have a nickname that you can't nickname Sarah. Mm. What do you do with that? <laughs> Sarah. Big S. Ra. Ra. Big, a homie called me Ra in high school, but like it's, even then it was only him. Like Ra. it was just, it doesn't roll off the tongue like that. It's kind of weird. Well, to spell it out, E, or excuse me, on Instagram and TikTok, at the Afrocentric Ratchet, on mm-hmm. Twitter, the Afro Rat, and stream SJ the Afrocentric Ratchet on all platforms. This is true. Yep, we got to take a break. Follow us, Dogstar Podcast. We'll be right back. Follow us. Bow wow. Bow wow. Welcome back to Dog Star. We are sitting down picking the brain of SJ, the Afrocentric Ratchet. Yes. And I want to jump right back into kind of the, uh, I guess, the jumping off point, aptly put, Mm -hmm. to some of the the earliest collaborators um, that you would care to mention, some early influences, whether it was people Hmm. being on a track or uh, producing a beat or just getting you on stage. I went to a shut up and rap. I competed in a shut up and rap competition in That's right. whatever year that was. Right. Ooh, no, much, much, yeah, probably like nineteen. Oh, yeah, twenty nineteen. Definitely pre pandemic for yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, and I remember Fruit Punch Lover Boy was one of the judges when I competed, and I didn't win, mm. and I wanted to kick him in his shin, <laughs> but that was fine. Right. right. Um. Someone. Got in, it. Yes. But I did meet someone there, and they invited me to a jam with um, some folks at Augsburg. And I was like, okay. And I went. And there I met Zachariah Khan and uh, Quay and oh, wow. Ben Yoshihara. Oh, and, whoa. Uh, Ricky, well, I had been met Ricky, like, in real life, doing tangible uh, thoughts to open mic and stuff. But mm. um Ricky was there, and this was pre-Ricky rapping, and Ricky was trying to learn how to use the jump pad. Mm. And we was, like, at Zach's dorm room at Augsburg. Whoa. This was all in one jam sesh, or uh, yeah. maybe a few, but oh, but this same went, group of this people. went on, collect, like, for a year at least. Yeah. So we're in there, like, every Saturday night, like, till 6 in the morning, just Whoa. making stuff. 
yeah. writing stuff on the spot. Like, I remember one night, the first time I met, met Brandon, he came through, or Quay, he came through, and he was fresh off his security job, looking like just so tired, super disinterested. They was like, oh, this is SJ. And he was like, oh, yeah, what's up? I want to play you some beats. And I was like, oh, okay. He played me some <laughs> stuff. I was like, oh, my God. I, think I love you. This is the best thing that ever happened to me in my life. Yeah. And um, Zach actually mixed my first mixtape. So my self-titled uh, SJ, the After Jurassic mixtape on SoundCloud. Stream okay. that, baby. Okay. Um, he, he mixed it for me. Wow. Um, wow. And when I first dropped it, I had my first session with Quay. And we sat and we listened to it. And he was like, yo, you're cold. Like, we finna just go crazy. And in that time frame after that, we produced Yodi. Wow. Yeah. So, just yeah, clicked. connections yeah. for a lifetime from yeah. that one. Yeah, those are my boys. Like, they're my sons. I tell them all the time, like, those are my children. Um, we really found our, our sound together, I think. A lot of what's happening now in the city, I don't often do this, but I'll be cocky and do it today. A lot of what's happening now is us. A lot of what's happening now is like that early stuff that we were doing back then, the putting out the different sounds like Papa, like that's all. It's like a camp. We just never said we was a camp, you know? And it's because we couldn't. We just weren't like, we were like, we wanted to do everything right and good and it just wasn't working. And Mm so we just like, let's keep hustling and just keep grinding forward and wherever it goes, it goes. And that's what we're doing. And everybody's like a thing and a person now that Mm -hmm. means something to the city artistically. Um, But at a point, we was really just knucklehead kids just in Zach's dorm, just going crazy. But investing that time, investing that passion, Mm -hmm. putting in that 10,000 hours, if you will. Yeah, it absolutely was that. And I feel like, some of the best things I've written to date were written in that room. Are any of those sessions on someone's broken laptop somewhere? Um, broken laptops, not broken laptops, phone in my pocket right now. Like, I, absolutely. Um, I think we even still revisit certain things. There are certain wow. things that might still see the light of day. Yeah. Um, collabs and stuff that will never see the light of day, but <laughs> the experience is definitely shaped what we're all currently experiencing in the city. Like, we all feel the, it's a fire going right now. Mm-hmm. But I remember when it was just the cold. Right. How did your songwriting process develop during that time personally? Hmm. It was my first time having to write with any added pressure, I guess. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's like 10 artists in a room and like four, four of them are producers and they're over there just picking on their buttons and pushing their stuff. And you're over there like, trying to write and then all of a sudden they change the vibe and the BPM and oh, like go left no. yeah. but it's kind of hidden so you just go with it right, like you right. know it, it gave me the ability to be agile I guess mm-hmm. in a writing session totally. I feel like I can sit in any room with anybody and write whether it takes you two hours two days two months whoever, whatever your style is I can come in there and match that because there are certain tracks that I can write in five minutes and there are tracks that take years and years that I still haven't finished to this day with so. with that being said do you understand when uh, an artist who you're going to have a feature verse on doesn't get back to you in a um, quick way do you understand that or do you set a time frame when you I'm a bit Cole-esque in that way where I don't I'm not a big feature person okay, okay. Um, I don't request a lot there of features there are very few yeah. yeah there are very few at least few. vocal features yeah yeah very very few I'm not a um, I'm a very closed session closed rehearsal closed set type of artist. I'm I'm just like that. Um, I don't know if I could extend the grace. <laughs> you know, I totally need it because there are mm. things that take me so long to do. Um, but I don't often hear things in, like, where they're not complete mm. with me, at least, where it's like, this is my song. I hear me all up and down this joint. <laughs> right, like, right. it is very rare that I ask anybody for a feature. I can hear somebody on it. But um, if I was to name a few, I got some stuff with Taylor Brienne. Yeah. Um, Hard, heavy hitter all the way. Um, who who else I got some features with? I'm not a feature gal. I just don't be doing it. Um, I got a feature with Euphoria's Room. I want to, yeah. Muja, but that's, yeah. See, the, 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 the crazy thing is like, I can't wait to drop the upcoming stuff because I just do not live in that any of the old stuff anymore because it's just it's not even close of a representation of where we're at like artist, still like, not evolving even, still moving forward like Yodi's given like Coco Melon and like the album is given like Masterpiece Theater 
Whoa. It's a completely different world. It's it's, okay, it's cinema. Okay. Um, and, and I promise you, it's not even like a, a, a from a, a braggadocious place. It's like, hey, it's facts. It's literally just like, I don't even, I love Yodi because it's my fun little baby. Yeah. But like, and the parties. Yeah. For the, Yodi. The Yodi, Yodi events Palooza, are probably the best right. things that I will take from that for sure. I always remember the Yodi shows. And um, I do plan on throwing a Yodi finale um, in the near future because it's going to be, I'm, I'm, I'm done throwing Yodi shows. How would like, you conceptualize like, those parties like there wasn't really people throwing those fun of concerts before you were throwing those concerts well and that i had been to in the yeah i league. think it goes back to me being extra i mm. never want to do anything regular or just like normal i didn't want to just throw a show where like artists came on stage and then that was it mm -hmm. like i wanted it to be the dopest i wanted it to be the funnest i was like let's make it a party in the middle of winter and it literally was the last the first yodi was the week before lockdown we had no idea that we were going to be locked down. Right, mm. right. But before we got locked down, <laughs> we had a party to remember. Um, there wasn't a lot of thought into it other than just wanted to make something and do something fun with the people I had been making and doing things with. Yeah. Had you, like, thrown people's bridal showers or birthday parties? No. Or, like, how no, release parties? It seems no, so... no, no. I, would, I will say I owe a lot of that to one of my best friends and a dope event coordinator and a uh, person who puts things together on the city, uh, Tella. Tella, mm. she did, she has Tella, um, where are my words at? What's the, Tella works. She's so, mm. right now she's working on a, a new thing. She's going more into like the uh, nonprofit sector and more in like uh, uh, coaching and things like that. But for Ooh. the longest time she was throwing shows, we met at uh, a tangible. She came to see me at that shut up and rap thing. Sweet. And then we became best friends. Wow. And so, wow. She came on board and helped me a lot with that. Um, my best friend, Ray, um, who was managing me for a good period of time, helped me with a lot of that stuff. My wife mm. helps me with a lot of that stuff. So it just was a team at that point. Like I just had a lot of hands on deck. Quay helped. DJ McShellen helped. Everybody helped make it turn into that. Um, so that first one is super special. I'll never forget the first one. Um, the second one was different because I felt like we were trying to go bigger. I felt, you know, like come at it differently. And I had a, a different idea how I wanted to do it. Mm. Um and it still was dope as the first one. Like, right. yeah, it was cold. Um, I don't know. I just want to make sure it's an experience every time I do a thing. I don't want right. you to just, like, come see me. Just uh, come see me rap. I want you to come right. see stuff. An experience. Yeah, an event. Been, yeah, because, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm not from here. And I notice a lot of things are, like, just lacking structurally. You know, we don't have the infrastructure for a lot of things artistically. Right. Mm -hmm. So shows at this level are not happening. Often people are just... Mm -hmm doing what they can with the resources that they have. But I'm like, I'm, my mom always taught me, exhaust all your resources. So right. I will squeeze all the juice out of whatever I can yeah. to get the desired outcome. Yeah. Have you ever been to a concert that's as cool as the the Yodi parties or like like a Beyonce concert or, or even a music festival? So fun fact, um, the first concert I've ever been to was when I was in and it was Afropunk. I had never been to a concert Whoa. in my like Whoa. life. <sighs> That's mind blowing. Um, I'd always wanted to, but I just, you know, never economically <laughs> could make it work in my right. life. Um, and we got to open up for Ari Lennox, and I got to watch Ari Lennox this far from me oh on the stage gosh. while she performed. We was on the side of the whole time. Oh my god! Yeah, it felt so good. It was amazing. <laughs> it was just not incredible. But yeah, that was the first time I ever been to a concert. Um, but the second concert experience was Kendrick Lamar, oh. and that was the uh, what's this current one we on right now? What's the current the Kendrick tour? project? Oh, um, I stuff. Mr. Mm, Morale. I can see the one. album cover. Okay. <laughs> one of the most like life changing experiences, I will say. Um, I want to make crazy shows, yeah. and then I was like, "Wow, he's making crazy shows!" Like it, I was crying. I was. I had chills. I. I'm very much an in-the-moment type of person. I'm not a phone, record the experience right. mm -hmm. at all. I don't even do that at local shows. I want to be there in the moment. And I was lost. I was lost. It was amazing. Because that was the Target Center XL or... XL. And so it's like a Broadway show. It's yeah, with the it big was the whole pieces. thing. Yeah. And that's what I want to do. And I feel like um, the last show I did, the Once Upon a Time at 7th Street Entry, yeah. a lot of people didn't get to experience that, but I felt really bad for people who didn't like... There's no shows getting put on 
like that. Period. In the city. I'm sorry. Like it's not just yet. it's the truth. Not yet. Yeah, y'all, y'all got to catch up with me. Like, yeah, you know, seri- no, thing. seriously, no. I feel um, like all these artists are catching up with you. It's... Yeah, that that. But I feel like the concept of like the experience, like not not duplicating what you see on social media, which mm-hmm. is like the hundred people on stage while you do mm-hmm. the, this moment. <laughs> yeah, like that's a that's a, that's a that's a that's a cheat code, you know. Mm-hmm. That's but to to curate something that can lock people in that they'll never forget. That's what I'm going for. That's the Beyonce, the Kendrick. Like, that's the effect I'm trying to have. And so, yeah, we're going to take some a time out on doing shows for a little bit oh. so that the next one I do, I'm really knocking everybody's head off, for real. Well, we can't wait, not only as as supporters of the scene, but as fans, too. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Can't wait. Can't wait. <laughs> Sooner than later, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah for <laughs> sure. For sure. So, um... We know that you're uh, a mother as well. Yeah, um, definitely how do got a shorty. You, yeah, how have you been balancing being an artist with being a, being a mom? Huh, it's really tough because um, I think people get this idea that as a woman, when you have a child, you no longer exist. You're just a mom now. Mm. And you can only be a parent and you can only think about their well-being and nothing else in life ever again. Mm. And it's just like not true because right. if you can't be a full person, you can't show up as a full person for your kid. Mm. And so there are times where I'm like in show mode and I'm completely stressed and depressed and like going through it. And he's like, a lot of shows coming up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. And he's like, it's going to be okay. <laughs> oh, man. You know, so I've I've raised a very empathetic person. Um, he's very conscious of my personhood. Um, he, he's 11, so he's a real person. Yeah. Right? Like, he's obviously been here a couple times before. Out of his mind thinker. Wow. Um, in- incredibly emotionally intelligent. Freakishly emotionally intelligent. Um, mm-hmm. so it's, it's, it's fine. Like, right. it's cool. I mean, it's a testament to, yeah. to your growth as a person. Yeah, like, he gets it. Sometimes, you know, we can all be frustrated by the demands of it, but, you know, he, he, he wants me to be the best and go for whatever makes me happy. And that's what enlightens him to know that he can do so. I don't have to do like the, you can be whatever you want to be thing. I, I try to live it so that he knows it's like right. a real life thing. And he wants to go to space. So, and not like that, that, that like that, like, regular kid where I'm going to be an astronaut like right. he's like no I'm going to live on a space station and this is going to be my role and da 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 wow. and, uh, yeah he's like I love that light years ahead of everybody on the planet so literally yeah <laughs> literally yeah. like mom like kid for sure yeah he's he's running circles around me and he he doesn't he's not into music as much as I am but he's artistically inclined. Not so making like, him sing on any milk crates or anything. <laughs> I would love to, <laughs> but he's very independent in his thoughts. So if he won't, if he doesn't want to do something, he will not do it. It's just not a, a thing. But we did record. We did write a song together, though. No way. And he he wrote like ninety five percent of it, and the lyrics, everything is fire. Oh it's like a gosh. house song. It's so fire. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he's singing. But he won't let me play it. He won't let me do anything with it because he said he sounds 11. Mm. I'm yeah, like, you're 11. You're supposed to sound 11. Then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but he's like, nah. Not yet. Not yet, I guess. Mm. So we'll see. Patience. Or he'll, he'll, move to, he'll move on to the next phase, the next interest. Yeah, you never know. yeah he's a car guy. So I think he <laughs> might sing in the car and leave it at that. Hey. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I'm sure, um, you know, being a, a part of a family unit, it does take away from the artistry. Do you think it adds more to the artistry than it takes away? Absolutely. Um, for me, at least. Mm-hmm. Everything I write about is in some form personal experience. Right. So there might be times where I'm in, like, straight writer's block because life is too calm mm-hmm. and mm. everything's a little too chill. There are no mm, problems. Right, right. Um, and me and my wife get into a nice good argument and I got juicy material <laughs> for the next track. At least or, raw emotion. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, yeah. yeah um, just different experiences are what inspire the work. So for me, if I didn't have my family, I would be having a lot less of certain experiences, mm-hmm. I guess. And so I know the art would probably just be different, I guess. But for me, I like the fact that I get to represent a different demographic in terms of, like, who I'm making music for. I'm starting to realize as I'm getting older, I'm not making music for the kids. Mm. You know, like, I feel like 
they kind of shoot that at you. You have to make music for the young people. Right. And I'm starting to realize that it's like, hmm, it's a lot more older people than it is young, than 18 year olds. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm starting to become more comfortable in recognizing that whatever I'm talking about, um, it's okay because that's where I'm at in my life. I don't have to keep chasing the the fads of things. And there are people with families and kids and, and mm-hmm. wives and things like that. Right. So I think it's opening up a different uh, space for me creatively. So Yeah, I, I mean, a huge realization to come to. Some people don't ever come to that realization. Yeah. Of, yeah. You know, I, I just, you know, I got to act like I'm 23 forever. I got to yeah. make music for 23, you know, for yeah. the young people. It's, and I had a, I had a person... My, my hood shaman, I call her. Um, I She told me that she never tells people her age because once you tell people your age, they put whatever those expectations are around that age right. onto mm-hmm. you. And I had never thought about it that way. And I realized, I was like, I feel younger now than I did when I was 19. Mm-hmm. When I was 19, I had a fresh baby. I had a partner I was taking care of. and full I had adult. I was a yeah. full-fledged right. adult. At almost 30... I'm throwing sold out shows, having fun, getting drunk with my friends. You know, like it's the opposite for me. So I can never let people make me feel old because Mm. I'm getting older. I just feel informed. You know, I'm glad I'm glad to be older now because I feel less stupid. If I got got on at 19, 20, I wouldn't. I don't think I would be here. I don't think I would be. You you have too much access, too much money, too much. There's no regulation, and if you don't have it for yourself, then yeah, it kind of sucks. So. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back with more SJ, the Afrocentric Ratchet here on Dog Star. Bow wow. Bow wow. Welcome back to Dog Star. We are sitting down with a class act. <laughs> SJ, the Afrocentric Ratchet. Period, Pooh. Yeah. And I'd say, I mean, run it through the discography. Yeah, we're running on time in the interview. To exactly. To be honest with you. But yeah, we got to run through the discography, Spotify discography, which isn't all the stuff. Check out Not the Not all the stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so we got Yodi as a single, Yodi EP. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was in 2019, you dropped the single. 2020, you dropped the EP. Mm-hmm. And then... Uh, Pillars you dropped separately after that came out on Spotify? It was a like a chopped and screw oh, type version right. of Pillars. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I think I was like editing like a lyric video and slowed it down on accident. I was like, oh, this is so cool. I have to make this song. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. Awesome. a happy accident. For yeah. Sure. I like that. I mean, you could play those back to back. Mm-hmm. Two different yeah. Vibes, yeah. Totally yeah, different A side, B side record. Yeah, for That'd sure. Sweet. Um, and then teaming up with and this is my my Polish coming out Moose. Yeah. Uh, for Pinocchio. Yeah. That collaborative track that in twenty twenty one. Yeah, produced by Ben Yoshihara. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's dope. Any uh, future, if you can reveal any future beats produced by them coming out? Oh, my out? whole album is produced by Zach Quay and Ben. Oh, oh sweet. what? Yeah, the whole you dig. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hey-o. I don't know. We like when uh, people are working with local producers oh. and not. Yeah, to my kids. I got work with my kids. Right. Right. I have right. To. Yeah. Been... We we make everything together. We have babies. Yeah. And then, yeah, speaking of... Uh, discog- um, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to bring up Batgirl. Oh, yeah, the Batgirl, most the most recent, the teaser from the new... Yeah, it's the it's a single off the album. But went all out with it, did the music video. Yeah, if you haven't seen that music video, you got to check that Please out. Please do, because we did that. Uh, shout out to Rich Gambino. Shout out to all my dancers. Shout out to my best friend. She's a video yeah, girl. Yeah, shout out to the choreography. Oh, shout my out to, gosh. Yeah, Rich Gambino, the choreographer, yeah. Um, Driven Dreams on the... Yes, Connor, another Connor snapping hey, out in the world. <laughs> um, yeah, I just wanted to do the big to do. It was my first real video. I haven't put out any videos before that one. That's my first video. That you conceptualized, that you wrote, co directed. Yeah. You wore a lot of hats on this. Yes, absolutely. And I always say it's better to make no impression than a bad impression. Mm. I'm like one of those people, if once I see something that's like trashy or kind of crappy, yeah. once I saw it, it's like never again. I'll never. You can have the best thing next time. I just mm-hmm. never. I, I don't care anymore. Right. You got and that I know bad people, taste in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. I know people are like that too. So I never dropped the video because it just wasn't panning out. That's smart. And so I was like, with this one, I'm going to go all the way. And it's going to be perfect, and I'm going to do everything. And so, um, 
initially supposed to be like this really choreographed, like super dancey, like Destiny's Child type video. Mm -hmm. But we couldn't find a space in Minneapolis, once again, like that infrastructure thing Mm. where there was a full cyclorama room where like they had those rounded walls. Couldn't find one Hmm. that was like the full thing. Only in L.A. Like, mm. why? Come mm. on. It's ridiculous. Um, so I was like, hmm, what else could I possibly do? And I found a mansion on Pier Space. Sweet. And it was like, hmm, chin rub, Burt yeah. hand rub, and came up with this idea to do, like, this old-timey burlesque cooker house type of... <laughs> yeah, do the whole right. narrative versus uh, yeah. dancing. Kind of like a almost psychological thriller, yes, dystopian, it, yes, sci-fi. Yes. I mean, it's a lot going on. Yes, I really wanted to to give like a American Horror Story type vibe. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that the was camera the... camera angles and the... I don't know how people who shoot videos make it look like a movie, but it does. From it, the it, very first scene with the flip over, it like... That's why you have to be ready to like embrace people who are good at what they do and accept that sometimes that comes with a ticket because mm. like you can have people do a lot of things, but are they going to do it to that level? And like Driven Dreams is definitely doing industry level work. Like they're doing time, yeah. industry level work. And that's what we should be all trying to strive for is to compete on a national level mm-hmm. and not just a intercity level. Right. Yeah. Not be stepping on each other. We can right. all. We should right, because there's on. like not going to be. It's going to fizzle out, fizzle it, out again. Exactly. Yeah. And then we'll be in this this place of like, remember when we used to. Mm. And we don't want to do that again, right, guys? No. <laughs> so I mean, gotta, the Twin yeah. Cities music scene has been a lot of ebbs and flows for sure. So let's it is keep the it's... ebb and flow. Like if, if <laughs> ebb and flow was a place, this is the place. <laughs> and so, like to dismantle that, we have to start supporting the the entities that can support us back. Definitely. And it has to has to be a two way, four way. Every way it could be type right. of street. Right, extremely collaborative. I mean, you got to upgrade your studio space so we can shoot videos here so that artists can be inspired to write music so that those videographers can be inspired to make videos. Exactly. It's, it's all... Yeah, and we got to be ready to build. It can go. It's right. got to be... It's got to stay grassroots, you know? Like, we had that We had that in our on our side here. Mm-hmm. Is that everybody kind of, like, knows everybody, and we have to depend on each other to... To, to come out to shows and to, to stream projects. We have to. And so if we really capitalize on that, we'll capitalize on it and we should. Definitely. Definitely. So I, backtracking. Yeah, sorry to jump back into the discography. So mm-hmm. I've got some tracks that I couldn't find, mm-hmm. but I did find evidence of. So I wanted to ask <laughs> Detective about Detective work. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, so there was a Instagram post and the caption said, intro to Jay, and it was you sitting on a chair, a lady was braiding your hair. And that song is The super lady's cold. my wife. Um, <laughs> oh, it was you? <laughs> yeah, that's her. Oh, whoa. Um, yeah, she's a hairstylist. Shout out Star- to Hair Dan Booker. Oh, it all makes sense. Yeah. Um, I thought that was going to be a music video. Where... It just was a freestyle. Whoa. It just was like a little, you know, a 60-second Instagram thing. It yeah. was never supposed to be anything more than that. And I still get DMs to this day like, yeah, you gotta when you it. drop in this? Because it's look, like, yeah, this but... is all it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally nothing else. <laughs> Because, yeah, it looks like behind the scenes to a music video for sure. Yeah, yeah. and then I followed the uh, the trail and did find Reset, and you're featured on the song Reset by yeah. Rock uh, Win. Rock Win, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty, that's dope. That's on Spotify. Yeah. Um. So if you're looking to find all of her music, don't forget that one. <laughs> um, You performed Pluto Pluto. Yeah. On mic check. Yeah. Where is where's where's that? That's the album. Goodie. Oh, that's coming. Yeah, I feel like when y'all get the album, y'all gonna be like, huh, because it's gonna be a lot of things that you've felt or heard before in some in some way in some spaces, but you can never go stream. So hmm. yeah, Pluto Pluto is one of those. Zachary Khan on that joint. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, Zach Khan produced that one. Nothing wrong. That's with exciting. That. I mean, we're getting all these uh, snippets of what's to come, and mm-hmm. it's just getting me yeah. a lot more. Excited. Yeah, it just happens. <laughs> it's like Easter eggs in a sense, like. Yeah, it's out there. You gonna get it. And then yeah, I think if you watch the Carbon Sound interview, you'll find more yeah. new tracks. Ooh. Yeah, uh, those albums. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dishwater and a uh, Song of the Earth. So yeah, do your digging. And then a song that everybody wants to know where it is uh, would be the Ludacris. What's your fantasy? With remix. Taylor Brienne. Yeah. Look, hey, video coming soon. Release coming soon. Okay, okay. Uh, come see us before that. Y'all ain't go, y'all gonna miss it. 
Y'all right. should have seen us. <laughs> you should have been there, but like, yeah, we we that's coming. That's coming. That oh, was that's so exciting. Yeah, that was for the record books. Me and Taylor have been working on that one for a second. It rocks the house every time we do it. How do you guys prepare for a show? Or how what's the choreography or what's the rehearsal schedule like? Oh my God. It depends on like which one you're talking about. Cause sometimes we'll do a show like where I'll, I'll perform and it's like me, my DJ, or it's just me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or I might do a show where it's me and two dancers. and Or it might be Afropunk where it's eight dancers. Right. Mm-hmm. It was like ten dancers we had for Afropunk. Um, rehearsal schedules can be intense. I remember when I was doing Cherry Pit and this other show at the same time, I was in rehearsals every day of the week except for like Sunday. Whoa. And it might be Sunday too. And I was not sleeping. It was not anything at all <laughs> it was horrible I mean other than sacrificing and yeah. practicing yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a big part of the thing um, everyone who loves me knows that when it gets time for like intense show time somebody hand me a banana someone make sure I ate someone make sure I slept right. someone make sure I'm good cause I'm gone I'm like right. full Coachella Beachella mode like yeah. I don't don't talk to me we how do rehearse. you know when it's rehearsed enough or will you always take more time to rehearse it if you got it um honestly i'm not a big rehearsal person i don't personally like to rehearse oh um i i'm i'm very much a once i'm up there i'm in the moment i'll never practice anything okay. the way it's going to be seen on the stage wow. i just don't have it in me i've never done full out in rehearsal i just just not me. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know y'all. Well, I know y'all, but like, y'all not my, my I'm not entertaining y'all. Right. So it doesn't feel the same for me. I could never get lost the way I do on stage in a rehearsal. So more for me, I'm just a very like, like particular person. Mm-hmm. I'm at rehearsal because I want to make sure you doing what you're supposed to be doing. Oh, I'm at right, rehearsal right. so I can say, I don't like this or I don't like that. Or I'm at rehearsal to make sure I'm seeing the moves I'm supposed to do, but I probably will never do them in the rehearsal. What? I'm more so at rehearsal just to make sure things go right. Yeah, running smoothly. That's yeah, my mind, that's a control freak in me because I just can't practice the same way in front of people the way I can with myself. And when I'm with myself, I don't often practice. I just like listen to my stuff. My biggest goal is to remember it. Mm-hmm. That's it. I forget the lyrics. That's the thing. That's the issue. It ain't the performance. <laughs> I know what I'm saying. Oh, it's gone. We good. Yeah. But if I forget it, then it's tight. So I might be like before a show, I'll keep headphones in. And I'm just listening to the songs. I don't listen to anyone else on the day of a show. Like, I don't listen to other artists. I don't listen to other music as just, much as possible. Like, just do it distract you, or why do you do that? I don't like other words in my head. Mm. Okay, okay. You know, like, sometimes you might you might hear a flow, or you might rap something, and then you're like, I think I might have heard this somewhere. <laughs> and it's like the flow was probably something you heard before. Mm. And so I might mess around and sing that instead of what I'm supposed to be singing, because mm. I'm getting letting these words fill my brain like right contaminated. now. Contaminated. Yeah, yeah, so I have to be very much in... Just SJ Lane, SJ World. I don't like to talk before shows. I don't like to fraternize. I'm actually kind of like a weird person before a show. I mean, that's, a, yeah. that's yeah. so fascinating to learn that because when you're on stage, you... It's not like... Less, yeah, it's like it's all like all yeah, yeah. It seems meticulously like, no. planned. Yeah, exactly. and yeah. I like uh, perfect imperfections, you know? So I like things that are perfectly flawed. Like, I don't care that everything's right I care that everything feels good so mm. like even if the dancers messed up did you did you commit 100% did mm-hmm. you lose yourself in that moment did you give your all that's what I more so care about because I learned a long time ago that people don't know what you're supposed to be doing they don't know what they're coming to see mm. they're just coming to see it mm. when it happens they're like yay or boo mm-hmm, one of right. the two and so I stopped caring about whether everything was like right and more so about like the feeling so even with rehearsal it's still not even about right it's about the feeling if you messing up in rehearsal your 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 lack of confidence is coming across your face you're not committed you're not selling this to the audience mm. you're disturbing the vibe and the feeling of my show mm. now you're you two pass imperfect yeah. you gotta come back baby yeah so it's like that for me well we'd like to thank you again for thank sitting you. down with us the the two tracks we're about to play are both off of yodi got golden which is the third track and then pop it which is the fifth track the final track Mm -hmm. So enjoy that vibe for now, but we got another project coming, hopefully sooner than later. Yeah, let's not say days anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. But coming soon. Follow the Afrocentric Ratchet on Instagram. Follow Dogstar Podcast. Um, See you next week. Bow wow. Thank you again. (laughs) Bow wow. 
SJ. My honey's golden. My honey's bang bang. My honey's holding. My honey's bang bang. My honey's a one. Yo honey stand stand. Yo honey say so. My honey say thanks. My honey told me. Thank you for these blessings, baby. I told him say less. Get ready for seconds, baby. Yo honey text fast. When I send a message, baby, I ain't tryna sex some lady. I just hope it's go crazy. Every since I got up and it's and it's been a boy. Got that. Long braids for ya, big bucks for ya. He ain't tryna separate. Told him I need, okay. he just rent it. I guess that would make it fly. Treat your king like he a bomb. My man still think he the one. I guess that make me the don. I guess that make him a fool. Hit your man out by the pool. When I pop a nigga splash, she take liquid, make it cash. My honey's golden. My honey's holding. My honey's holding. My honey's really good. Yo, honey, say so. My honey's really good. My honey's really good. My honey's A1. My honey's really good. My honey's dripping in gold, rolling on foes, flexing and stepping on toes. He said he ready to go. I checked the pole like Megan, I'm driving the boat. He on his things like on foes, I'm on a roll. I treat these things like they owes. How could you even expose a bitch in her bed? Riding around with no Man, bones. you can't even get a taste back, sis. That's your man, but a fact check, sis. I don't even really gotta check that chick. He was still yours from the last check, chick. I don't even really wanna keep your dick. When you roll it up, holy smoke your switches. If I throw it back, girl, I know he won't pass. I don't catch feelings, so you know it won't last. My honey's golden. My honey's bang bang. My honey's holding. My honey's bang bang. My honey's A1. Yo, honey, stand, stand. Yo, honey, say so. My honey, say thanks. My honey's golden. My honey's bang bang. My honey's holding. My honey's bang bang. Yo, honey, say so. Bye, honey, say thanks. But I ain't their main thing, so I'm parked in the lot. About to pull off, pull off, disappear like pullouts. I don't need a th- unless he tryna pay my coop off. I don't need a th- cause they bitch and they too soft. Thought he had to come up, told his hot ass he get cool off. Need a th- with investments, he said f- the payroll. He been fing with them essays, so we ballin' pesos. He said, girl, you got that crack, I guess that make him fable. Told that nigga th- that I love him, you know that's a fable. Dollars, don't just stand around. 